Yesterday, the House voted on a major issue regarding the Trump impeachment process. It was moving to the next stage, the Senate trial. In this video, we're going to explain what happened here and what happens now the Senate is in charge of the impeachment proceedings. Quickly though, a reminder that we have a TLDR US Teespring store, including some exclusive States With Shoes merch in our classic design. Check those out by clicking the link down below. As you might remember from our last video, or just from being alive in the world, at the end of December, the House of Representatives voted to impeach Donald Trump on the charges of obstruction of Congress and abuse of power. Once he'd been impeached, the next step of the process is to send the articles to the Senate for them to vote on whether or not Trump should be convicted and removed from office. That's because impeachment and conviction are two very different things. Four presidents have faced impeachment proceedings, three have been impeached, but none have been removed from office. That's because removal not only requires that half of the House of Representatives needed to impeach the president, but then also two thirds of the Senate needs to vote to convict and remove the president from office. And that's certainly a very high bar to meet. Once the House have voted to impeach, some expected Nancy Pelosi to immediately send the articles of impeachment over to the Senate for a trial. However, she held off, deciding to delay moving the proceedings over to the Senate. Pelosi decided to do this because she objected to how Speaker of the Senate Mitch McConnell was treating the process. McConnell had previously stated that he wouldn't hear the trial at all, but he did eventually announce that he would allow the trial. And even when he agreed to allow the trial, he pledged to block new evidence and new witnesses from being used in the trial before the opening arguments. The Democrats took issue with this, especially considering the White House has been so intransigent in the process so far refusing to let a number of key witnesses testify. As such, they argued for the case to be heard properly, there needs to be a full trial, which would include new witnesses and new evidence. So Pelosi held off, she didn't send the articles over to the Senate, in the fear that Trump would get too easy a ride in the Senate trial. However, that all changed yesterday, when the House of Representatives voted to allow the progression to the Senate. So if they were so concerned about the fairness of the trial, why did Pelosi and the Democrats change their mind and progress to the trial stage? Well, they're hoping that things are beginning to swing in their favor. President Trump might have attempted to pressure Republicans in the Senate to dismiss the charges before the trial even begins, but Roy Blunt, the Republican chair of the Senate Rules Committee, told the media that the Republicans don't have the votes to support such a move. White House officials also told CBS News at the beginning of the week that they expect four or possibly more Republicans to vote against their party and join the Democrats in supporting the calls for more witnesses. Some doubt this and think the Republicans will continue to vote along party lines, but the idea of further witnesses now looks more possible. That means that despite Trump's attempts, there certainly will be a trial, and it's possible further witnesses will be allowed, exactly what the Democrats were looking for. Please note that none of this yet guarantees that witnesses will be allowed before the opening statements, but this strategy of delaying the trial allowed the Democrats to really highlight the issue. Pelosi has put the Republicans in a difficult position, where they're having to defend not allowing further witnesses, a case which could very easily end up looking like a cover-up. And to be fair, polling does show that the American people are keen to hear from further witnesses. And if the trial were to take place without them, there will be some incredibly key people to this case who were never questioned or heard from, a move which would be very unusual. For the moment, it looks like the Democrats might have got what they wanted. Democrats likely believe that the trial going ahead with new witnesses would increase the legitimacy of the trial as well as increasing the likelihood of Trump getting convicted. Although they must realise that due to the high bar for conviction and the current makeup of the Senate, a lot of Republicans would need to vote to convict the president, something which looks incredibly unlikely, especially in an election year. So if it's not likely that Trump will actually be convicted, even after Pelosi's strategy, then what were the Democrats really hoping to achieve? There's two main things, conversation and timing. We could also make an argument that the Democrats were simply doing it because they believe it's the right thing to do for the country, but we're gonna focus on these two more interesting points. Like in a lot of other countries, there's a huge chunk of the US electorate who are pretty locked into their party of choice. There's the people who love Trump as well as those who loathe him, and those people aren't likely to change their minds because of this trial. So Democrats are trying to appeal to those in the middle, those who either don't have a strong party allegiance or those who don't always bother to vote. They're hoping that by allowing more witnesses and highlighting what they believe the Trump administration has done, they can pull some people their way, as well as damaging the Republican turnout. 
Secondly, they're trying to damage any momentum that the president has been building it going into the 2020 election. The last few months have been consumed with talks of the impeachment. Every time Trump has been stood in front of a helicopter, he's taken the opportunity to defend himself and insist that there's been no collusion. Instead of using the time in the lead up to the election talking about his campaign, the economy and his administration's successes, he's instead been talking about the impeachment proceedings. Now this might play well with his base, who love the discussion of corrupt Democrats, but it doesn't seem to be making big waves with the rest of the electorate. In fact, in the same time frame leading up to Obama's re-election in 2012, President Obama saw his approval rating increase from 41 to 49%. Trump has been so focused on his impeachment that he's not been able to fully make his case, and as such, his favourables have stayed flat at about 42%. There are certainly other explanations for Trump's stagnant approval ratings, but it's inarguable that the impeachment has sucked all of the air from the room. With time running out and the trial set to continue, Trump hasn't been left long to make his case. We'll continue to follow the trial as it takes place in the Senate, and although it looks unlikely that he'll be impeached, we'll keep you abreast of all of the major news, so be sure to subscribe to the channel for more explainers. Also, we'd love to hear what other topics you'd like us to cover. You can comment down below all of your video ideas and we'll see which ones we can get to.